In this video, I'm going to show you how this little device and one little trick can help raise the pH in your tank, make your corals grow faster, and even get them to color up better. And I'm going to post a link in the description. If you're looking for it, you can get one through our website. Okay, ADHD, you can see here, but I have achieved better in the freshly calibrated and why I just now I record it. I keep coming around this corner. Oh! No, it's just Ray. What is going on, my reading fan? March here, this is Fagbox TV, and welcome back to the channel. We are in the basement, the haunted basement of Fragbox. Oh my God, it's there. It's the poltergeist, Never mind. it's just Will. Who knows what he's up to? He's just messing stuff up, just like the ghost does. Why do I say there's a ghost down here? Because there is. Uh, we have a local resident ghost that haunts the basement, but he's kind of friendly, it's just like, he plays pranks on us, or she, or just moves stuff around. Anyways, that's not today's video. Today's video is going to be about pH, another scary topic, and why I just hooked up these CO2 reactors, and also why you may want to consider doing this on your tank. Now, there are a lot of different ways to raise pH, but I have found one of the best ways to do it is to get fresh air into the room that your aquarium is in, or getting even fresh air into the aquarium itself. Now, why might you want to raise the pH? One is overall coral health. When the pH is kept closer to where it is in the ocean or higher, the corals are under a lot less stress. I find that they just look better, they look healthier, and they grow a lot faster with higher pH. So, I was struggling here to get above 8.1, 8.2 during the day. Nighttime we were dipping down to like 7.8-ish and I changed our pH probe on our Neptune Apex. Freshly calibrated. We run a full Neptune system, a very complicated system actually here at the store and nobody is allowed to touch this box. See it says we have our little Spongebob poster here. Do not touch ever. This is owner marches area in the store. Anyways, the pH probe is calibrated, so I'm confident in the readings. And just from this one little change, hooking up these two CO2 reactors, I did see a noticeable difference. So let me show you on the apex. Oh my God, we have so many buttons. You can see here before installing those CO2 reactors and then afterwards. That was right there the day after. So we can see a noticeable difference for sure. I'm hitting now 8.33. During the day, 8.3, ah, 5, and then nighttime, 8.1, which is pretty good. But I have achieved better in the past. I want to see 8.4, 8.5. We want to get that CO2, that carbon dioxide, out of the water because not only does it help with the growth of the corals, also the color. Check out these Super Saiyan zoanthids. So nice, beautiful. But I've seen in other tanks, when the pH is not, oh damn it, I'm seeing a coral in the corner of my eye that died. See, acros do like a lot of flow, but this guy for sure was getting direct. He was getting pummeled, and I would suspect that's why he's dead. And these are getting stung. Who checked this for coral welfare today? Hmm? Okay, ADHD over. Our sidetrack is out of the way. Color, color is, I can tell you for sure, is very closely tied to pH as well. So I've seen them in lower pH environments and they can lose quite a bit of color. So color for one, I think that we can all agree as hobbyists, we prefer corals that are more colorful versus corals that are less colorful. I don't think there's any argument to be had. Now, I think that the color is just related to the overall health. When they are healthy, they're gonna show off their best color. I often think of corals sort of like people. When you're in your best shape, when you're feeling your best, you're gonna look your best. And the same goes for the corals. And so when the pH is higher, which means the water is more basic, there's less CO2 in the water, that is when we're getting the best results. When it's more acidic, so when the pH is lower, closer to zero, we're getting more and more acidic, then we run into some serious problems. And it's sort of related to a lot of the problems we're seeing right now in the ocean. You often heard this term, acidification of the oceans. They are getting more and more acidic, which is no bueno for the corals. They can really suffer. So if we want to get the best results, best growth, and best color, we want to keep our pH as high as we, we possibly can. So how are we going to remove 
carbon dioxide from the water. So that's typically how we're going to do it. You can also use calc wasser. Um, you're going to want a, a calc stir to do it properly and safely. Please do not add calc wasser directly to your tank. Please don't do anything with calc wasser without doing a lot of research beforehand to see if it is the best option for you. Now the other thing we can use are refugiums, macroalgae like this. What we can do is set up refugiums and run them on an alternate cycle. So we run the lights over top of a refugium at nighttime and this can help buffer the pH. Now I've even toyed with the idea of taking all of this live rock out of our sump. This is our main sump in the store that's running it and turning this into just a giant like chato refugium or something like that to help with the pH. I'm not there yet. It's a little bit drastic. What I'm going to do is hook up four more of these to pull the CO2 out of the water. So this is carbon dioxide removing media that's in here. It changes color once it's exhausted. And the way it works is in, in this instance, I'm hooking it up to our skimmer. So on your skimmer, if you have a, you should have a line, your Venturi line that's pulling air in. This connects to this one. And then it's really simple. It's just filtering the air that's coming into the tank. So you're decreasing the carbon dioxide. And what I'm gonna do one more little trick is take these lines and I'm actually gonna run them outside to the outside of the store. So instead of drawing this stale air that's in here, I'm gonna draw nice new fresh air from outside. So I gotta run it, let me show you. Do, 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 do. Oh my God, Willie, you're rubbing off on me. I just said do, 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 do. That's like his signature line is do, 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 do. I'm gonna get him a shirt made one day that says do, 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 do. I gotta go all the way through here, through our furnace room past all of our styrofoam boxes, past all of our retail packing. This is a uh, raised shipping layer and our hot water tanks. Bust a hole through the wall or maybe just go through the window actually, and then draw the air from outside. Hopefully that little trick will give me maybe another, another point. Maybe I'll see 8.4, maybe 8.45. It's often to get your pH up, it's many little incremental things. It's not just one to correct it, this is pretty good. I'm really just chasing numbers here. Um, if you're between seven point, let's say seven and, and eight, eight point oh, it's not bad. You're not going to be killing corals, but if you want to take the tank to the next level and you haven't looked at pH, um, get yourself a pH meter and carefully go about trying to raise it. 8.36. That was the highest I was able to get with this little modification, but that's still pretty good. You know, now we're just really chasing that 8.4 number. There are other things you can do. There's lots of different tricks, but it's usually going to be a combination of different things if you're trying to get the highest pH possible. I'll just show you quickly in the basement. The setup is now finished one more time. To the haunted basement. I figured that if I keep the camera on, keep recording and keep coming around this corner. Oh, no, it's just Ray. That's just Ray fragging some corals. I was hoping <clears throat> or thinking maybe one day we'll catch the ghost on camera. So quad, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, CO2 reactors, all drawing air now from outside. My skimmers are going a little bit crazy because I accidentally flooded the sump. That is part of just living with ADHD. I should never walk away when I'm doing something, just stay put. You know, I feel like, oh, I'm gonna remember, and then I go somewhere else, and I don't. These are color changing, so we can see when they're exhausted. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad to see just a little change like that. We were able to get up a couple more points. I'm wondering, is it gonna be effective if I set up another four? Is there a limit to how much these things, the CO2 scrubbers, how much CO2 they can pull out of the water. I just want to show you if you don't have the space to set up um, something like that with the scrubbers, even just running an airline from your skimmer outside to pull fresh air can make quite a difference. So we come up through the floor here. Now we're at the back of the store. It goes up. So we have two lines because we're running uh, two sets of them, two skimmers. It sneaks beside the fan. And I'll just show you quickly outside our ugly back parking lot. That's it. I can actually feel them sucking air. So little changes, little things can make a big effect. Just little tricks, little hacks, big, big difference. This is a large um, system here in the store. So 
we got to do multiple things on a smaller tank you know it could have a bigger impact than just making a couple points ph difference but i do notice that on certain corals where i was lacking on growth let's say this pearl berry for example i get all these new shoots as soon as i can get the ph just a little bit higher i do notice increased growth almost right away on some of the hard corals and, and acropora so all these little nubs that have started to shoot out on this one you know, can I attribute it to just hooking up CO2 scrubbers? No, I cannot. We are also, probably the water is like in the best shape it's ever been. And I have to say, I have to give a shout out to our friends over at Atoll Reef Wholesale, Trina and Patrick. If you know the names, you have to. If you've watched the channel, he, uh, we're buddies. And we, uh, we travel sometimes and we do videos together. This is his uh, brainchild. And we're sending off water every week with this ICP MS crazy water sample analysis. It's not cheap, it's like a hundred bucks, but we're getting back all the values and then we plug that, well, we don't plug it into anything. I give them over to Patrick and he tells us exactly what to dose in terms of barium, zinc, potassium, iodine, manganese, molybdenum, fluoride, nickel, fluoride, cobalt, blah, 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 blah. I think I said fluoride twice, but anyways, the water is bang on. Like when you do that ICP test, you get these little very satisfying green check marks to tell you that the level is within range we're almost all green right now and i can definitely see the effect on the corals they're looking super duper good i could stand here and talk to you guys all day about corals but we have to at some point wrap up the video say thank you for watching and say goodbye we hope to see you guys back here on the next episode hope you had fun hope you learned something hope you can get that ph up and uh bye bye we'll see you on the next one